Hello and welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we're going to take a little look at what the Gufu Mido does with its low temperature hot end. So we've got a bunch of sample prints here. Before we get started, roll those credits. Okay, welcome back. So today we are taking a little look at what the Gufu Mido does with its stock hot end. So the Gufu Mido, you can buy it and it, as stock, it comes with a regular hot end that goes up to 260 degrees. So we've got PLA, PETG, we've got TPU, and we've got some ABS prints here as well. We've also got some dimensional accuracy prints that we've done and some print tests there. This isn't the full review of this printer yet, that's coming. And the reason for that is because we've also got the 400 degree hot end kit for this machine. So we're gonna fit that and we'll do a follow-up video where we show some of the high temperature filament prints that it can do. Um, so that goes up to 400 degrees. So there's not many filaments at that point that theoretically we won't be able to print with this. So we're gonna get ourselves some engineering filament. We're gonna throw ourselves some challenges, do some torture tests and do some things like that. And then we can uh, and then we can bring you that as well so you can see how this works as an entry level industrial machine as well as just an everyday printer. Looking. As an entry level industrial machine as well as an overall everyday printer that you could just use with a regular hot end. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started with the obligatory calibration cube. So this was done at 80 millimeters a second. You can see there's some slight imperfection on the X there. That was due to when I printed this, I left the, uh, I left the hood on. Um, and when the hood is on this, there's actually a little bit of an issue with it being too, running too hot for PLA. So, um, so it didn't do a fantastic job on that, but the sides are good, the Z is good, the Y is good. So we've got a lot of goods there. That's really, really nice, a really nice calibration cube. We then move on to the benching. So we can see here that the part cooling is actually pretty good. You can see that the overall print quality is very nice. Um, this is just the Z seam that, uh, that I hadn't randomized. Um, again, bear in mind that this really is an evaluation of the printer, not supposed to be an evaluation of my slicer settings. But that being said, as far as benches go, that one's really nice. So then we can take a look at the all-in-one printer test. So this one came out really nicely. So a beautiful surface finish, really nice bridging, really quite good on the stringing test there. Dimensional accuracy was bang on. And overhang wise, on the steep overhang, we're doing okay up to 60. And on the longer overhang, we're doing okay also up to about 60. So the part cooling on this machine is just on one side. So it's important to remember that, you know, it's not gonna have the most amazing bridging at this kind of, uh, at these kind of temperatures. Um, but still a very respectable finish, very nicely done. Some other prints that I did. So first off, I did this really nice vase. Now this vase is an absolute nightmare for retractions. That being said, I think you'll agree that it came out very, very nicely. So I'll pop the link to the video in the video description as to where to do this, uh, to, to get this vase from. It is from Thingiverse and that came out really, really well. We've got wavy vase. So this is done in actual vase mode. As a result, it is only a single layer thick. So as you can see, really nice first layer there. Beautiful extrusion down the side. Done a really, really nice job with that. And as well, I did this vase here this spiral vase and again came out really clean really really nice i really like how that came out that is all of the pla prints we bring ourselves to pet g so i did two lots of pet g with this one 
I did a benchy in a blue PLA in a blue pet G that I've literally had on the side for I think it has been out of any vacuum sealing, just sitting on the side for about three years. It is an old pet G. But that being said, that is still a very, very respectable looking benchy there. Slicer settings could do with a little bit of tweaking, but overall, I mean, I am happy with that. This came out really quite nicely as well. The biggest issue I had here was with retractions. So there were supports on this, and this really comes down to my slicer settings. So I have not spent any real time going through and changing all my slicer settings to get this perfect because you know because this is a review machine and you don't want me to spend the best part of a month trying to get it as perfect as humanly possible i actually printed this in pet g first and then i amended the profile to print this benchy and the benchy did come out infinitely better than this did despite the fact that this is relatively new PL uh, pet g and this is a relatively old one so, um, but you can see that it's done a really, really nice job. You can see the surface finish there in this filamentive bronze, I think this was. Really nice finish, really nice extrusion. I mean, it's, it, it's, done, it's done a really nice job of that. As I say, unfortunately, there's a bit of support scarring that could have been solved had I have tweaked the profile, but I didn't. And then we come to ABS. So, this, for a lot of regular consumer grade uh, machines, is kind of the limit of really where people are willing to push their machines to. I've certainly struggled to find a decent ABS capable machine that is enclosed, that is direct drive, that's all metal, that is built to do these temperatures. This is the calibration cube for ABS. And I have to say, it's the best ABS cube I've ever had. It is very, very clean on the sides. It's nice and clean on the bottom. It's lovely on the top layer. I am absolutely chuffed to bits with this. These are the results that I normally get with a good profile on PLA. And I haven't tweaked this profile at all. And then we come to Pull that out a little bit for you there. We come to Mini Badger. So Mini Badger was designed for our by our friend uh, Anderson Bastos. He is a uh, he's a very talented 3D artist. We only had one issue printing this, which is that there's meant to be an extra cage on the outside of this um, of this here, but my support settings really weren't right, and as I pulled that off, it ended up ripping off the outside of that. But this came out absolutely glorious you can actually see i left a bit of support material in his ear well done me um but you can see that the way his face came out super super smooth that you can see under there that's all come out really nicely this is actually a stain on the bed from when i did the calibration cube but everything on that came out really really well he prints like this, and he is normally absolutely giant. So he's about 300 mil tall normally. Obviously, we couldn't do that on this machine because it's a 200 cube. But came out really, really nice. We're going to pop this guy in the uh, video description. We're going to upload him to Thingiverse, and I'd love to see what you guys are managing to do with your mini badgers as well. How big are you able to go? How clean are you able to get them? It's a challenging print. There's a lot of overhangs um, and uh, and you definitely need supports to make this work. But uh, keep an eye out for, uh, for a competition involving mini badger very soon. So, final thoughts. The Gufu is genuinely one of those click and forget machines. So we are, you know, I didn't do any calibration, as it does unfortunately show in some cases, for any of these machines, for any of these prints, sorry. Um, we did also do one of the torture test toasters. And as you can see, all of the things open up. Um, dimensional, dimensionally wise, we can go all the way down to a 0 0.2. That one also moves. And on this side, you can see that we've got all of the, uh, all of those came out quite nicely as well. 
I mean, I am very, very happy with how this machine does at a consumer level. This is what I would consider to be consumer level filaments. So we've got PETGs, we've got PLAs, we've got ABSs, we've got TPUs, which is a little more specialist, but still it's wonderful that it can do it. Um, what's gonna be really interesting is how this does at 400 degrees with the super hot hot end on it. Um, I am very, very interested to see how this churns out engineering grade filaments. If there was one issue that I had, it's not really anything to do with this machine, but it's how well this actually retains its heat. So when I was printing PLA, I had a couple of issues where I was getting clogging in the hot end, because obviously when we're, when we're here, this is, um, this is a direct drive hot end. Um, I was having a couple of issues with that. And what I realized was, was that where I had the lid, the top cover on, it was actually getting so warm inside that it was melting and softening my PLA before I actually managed to get it through the gears to the hot end. And that's what was causing my clogs. So, um, so after that, I took the top cover off and voila, it was printing everything brilliantly. Um, so the fact that it can print ABS this cleanly is an absolute testament to this machine. I'm not in any way suggesting this is the only machine that prints clean ABS. There are plenty of machines that print ABS nice and cleanly. This is, however, auto bed leveling. It is enclosed. It uses a USB thumb drive, not an SD card. It's got touch screen. It's got lights. It ticks all of the boxes that I need. Um, and all of the boxes that I expect for a machine of this price. Once you put a 400 degree hot end on this, which will be our next video, my God, you have a machine that at that price point, I do not know of another machine that competes at that level. Now we have to do the testing right? The proof is in the pudding. If we put the 400 degree hot end on here and it prints all those engineering grade materials like garbage, then the point is null and void. It, it doesn't matter anymore at that point because it's at that point it's just a very expensive PLA, PETG, ABS machine and there are other options in that market. But once you get a 400 degree hot end on there and you're printing nylons or peaks maybe, um, or you're printing P PSUs or PC materials, then at that point, this is really a loan in its price bracket. 1,500 US dollars, about, 12, about 1,100 British pounds, right? At 400 degrees on the hot end, there's, not, there's, there's machines that you could fit something like that to, and you could upgrade it to do that but I don't know of many machines that come from the factory that are able to do that with a kit. So I am, I am desperate to get that video done because I'm very, very, very interested to see how that happens. But definitely keep an eye on the channel, guys and dolls. We've got lots and lots coming up. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you all very soon. Thank you for joining us.